Hi guys, what's up? It's your girl Cecilia Shay, and we are back here with another video, y'all. I'm so excited to tell you guys about my first clinical experience and how it was and whatnot. And obviously, I want to give you guys some tips on if you're going into the PTA or if you're in a PTA program and, and then you have your clinicals coming soon. I want to give you guys some tips on what to expect, what not to expect, and pretty much what to do to kind of prepare you. Hopefully, this will be a huge help to a lot of the PTA community. Okay, so just to give you like a brief um, a brief story of how mine went, my, my clinical experience was amazing. I had literally like a very young CI that was also very just like he was just willing to let me really get my hands on so literally like the first day and I'm not saying this to scare you guys it all depends on your um on your clinical instructor but the first day I was treating patients and I was like you know I was like honestly I was impressed with myself because um you know he'd said it he was like I usually don't let students treat them treat patients on the first day and I was like you know that really meant a lot to me because obviously I was like pretty much outside of the norm and he literally like after the third patient he didn't even shadow me like I was just doing my thing and I was so excited the worst thing that happened during my clinical um, rotation is I literally sprained my ankle like pretty bad the second week how am I gonna do my rotation if my if I'm on crutches like every patient that looked at me they were, I was like oh what's your pain level like and they're just looking at me like no lady what's your pain level like and it was so like the first it definitely took some adjusting but I just I text my CI I was like hey dude like I, I sprained my ankle it's really bad I'm on crutches and I was like maybe there's other stuff I can do in the clinic to still get my hours and stuff and he was like well I don't feel comfortable you know letting you get hours and you're not you know treating patients like this is what this is about and I completely understood where he was coming from you know with that sense but I was like forget it I'm still gonna try to treat patients so y'all yeah, was literally like rolling around in a freaking um stool like treating my patients it was an amazing experience and that injury because I've had you know four ACL injuries but having an ankle sprain like kind of let me you know relate more to ankle sprains like and mine oh my goodness y'all my leg was so swollen like every night I would come home from you know like an eight hour shift and and my foot would be so swollen but I stuck it through and I finished out my rotation getting more than enough hours so my schedule was Monday through Friday nine to six that's like that felt to me like the worst schedule ever but I always showed up around 7 45 or 8 to get that extra hour and to really catch up on the things that I needed to learn about my patients so um let me get into the tips that you will need for your clinical rotation and I think this is very great advice okay so the first tip I want to give you is treat your um, clinical rotation like it's a job interview um, by the end of my clinical rotation I had connected so much with that clinic that the lady um the clinical manager she came up to me at the end and she gave me her her, her management card and she always she told me I can always hit her up whenever I do graduate you know if I need a job and that was like that's the ultimate goal like you're going through this clinical rotation to possibly connect and literally get a job after um, PTA is a very um, competitive field so you really want to make sure you're getting those connects be open be kind and really know your stuff and really you know kill it because these people are watching you and honestly they rather hire somebody that already knows the system and that already is familiar with the atmosphere than to hire an outsider so really connect and really get you know be literally treat it like an interview treat it as if you know this is going to be your next job or something like that like even if that's not the clinic that you want to be at I think um during the first few your first few job interviews you'll realize that you know it's competitive so you might have to stick with something that you don't really like at first and that's okay get the get the experience the next thing I want to say my number two is going to be be open-minded the biggest surreal thing that happened to me in my clinical rotation was the things that we had learned in school was not quite how they did it in the clinic. It was like completely different. And I'm not saying throw out everything that you learned in school. All I'm saying is don't be that person that's just like, oh, we didn't learn it that way. You know, like don't be that person. Be open-minded and just do go with the flow and, and do things 
you know, as it's taught in the clinic. Of course, you know, you have your ethical values that you do not, don't, you know, obviously do not go anything over your ethical values and, and obviously anything that could provoke your license or anything like that. Of course, stand up for those things, but every clinic does things very differently and be open-minded to things that you weren't really taught, you know, in school. I learned a lot of things from my CI because he had a lot of small certifications in a lot of things and I learned new stuff that they didn't teach us in school and that was pretty amazing. Um, this is probably the most important one. Always arrive early. Do not be that student that's coming in five minutes before the shift. Um, arrive early and let your CI know that you're ready, like you're ready. Um, a lot of the times I would arrive early finish up documentation if I needed to. And I also kind of looked at the upcoming patients that we were gonna have for the day. So the schedule. And also some of the times when I arrived early, I would try to look up more exercises that I can give the patients, like newer exercises. So I would like go on Instagram and you know, I follow a lot of hashtag PTAs and stuff like that. And they will show new exercises for different injuries. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna try this one out today. And you know, like I really just, I f when you go early, you're not so much in a rush of trying to gather everything together. Because I think the biggest thing that I kind of struggled with in the beginning of my clinical rotation is pretty much like reading through my patient's documentation and really seeing what they need. Like always go through their goals and always see like what exactly is wrong with them and know your contraindications. So sometimes like, because it's like every hour, you can fall behind on what exactly is wrong with that patient. Like there's a, you know, the doctor sends orders on, or the PT, I'm sorry, the PT will send orders on what exactly is wrong. So you need to be able to have enough time to read through those things and really know the underlying issue of your patient instead of just assigning them all kinds of random exercises, okay? My fourth um, tip that I wanna give you is stay on track with your documentation. I cannot stress how much time management is going to be so important. It could be your biggest benefit or your biggest downfall. And for me, it was a little bit of both. By the end of my clinical rotation, I was really starting to get a flow of things. So when you fall behind, it kind of creates all other issues. And, and for me personally, of anxiety and that, oh my gosh. And honestly, when you get into that state of being behind, it messes up your performance and I'm just gonna be very honest it messes up your performance so by the end of my first rotation I was treating up to two patients an hour pretty much um, you know if, if it was if it was on the schedule like I was treating just about two patients so whenever I did fall behind I felt like I wasn't giving my patient um, the best um, performance that I can give them you know I felt like oh because I'm behind now I have to stand behind this computer and document stuff from the last hour and now I can't you know do a manual therapy that I wanted to perform or you know do all you're just less um, involved when you're behind because you're trying to catch up on documentation so stay on stay up like every hour you should be done with your documentation for that hour and that's you know that's ideally of course it gets hard to do that because you know sometimes you're going to have a bad hour or sometimes you'll have a more complex patient that pretty much um requires a lot of your attention and i found my neuro neuro patients my patients that have you know nerve um neurological disorders sorry my patients that had neurological disorders were the ones that i had to be very much hands-on with and with that being said i couldn't really do a lot of documentation because literally the whole time you know i'm hands-on with them like you know whether it's passing a balloon or me passively stretching them like i was too hands-on to you know sit down for 20 minutes and document while they're doing an exercise because they were just required you know a max mass max assist or you know just a lot of attention and sometimes you'll get patients that their attention span is not that good so it requires you the to, 
you can kind of supervise them and always encourage them and that kind of takes away from documentation too okay so my next tip my fifth tip and it kind of relates back to the fourth tip is a good way to stay on top of your documentation is to really just have a blueprint outlined documentation that you write for the plan so for an example i always use um patient continued exercises um relating to this this and this um patient had difficulty doing this this and this like i had an outprint a blueprint of what my documentation was and that made it a lot easier and um my ci actually sent me different blueprints for different patients so we had a separate one for knee, we had a separate one for vestibular, we had a separate one for each one. So if you can take the time out before you start your rotation to write a really good assessment slash plan, um, just like a very you know detailed blueprint and have that, then documentation won't take as long. When you're always trying to make up stuff off the head, that can create a lot of issues. And then there's some patients where you're gonna have to do that because Let's just say if a patient was too sick to to finish out treatment, you have to put that stuff in documentation. So it'll be something like had to cease exercise after 30 minutes due to this, this, and this, and this. Like that stuff you can't control. Like that stuff you have to, you know, think out, think outside of the box and write. And wording is really huge too. Like um, try not to sound so chopped up, so much like a robot let it be a flow as far as your documentation but if you get a blueprint and just follow that blueprint for documentation you will be fine and i promise you on that okay. um and then this kind of ties into my fourth and fifth tip but my sixth tip is to always reread your documentation before you turn it in so um sometimes like let's just say the subject you had the left arm and then um for the the assessment you had the right arm when it was in reality the left arm so you always have to definitely reread and definitely um correct those little small mistakes that people typically make and i made a lot of mistakes and i hated it because my ci would have to come to me and he'd be like oh you put this but it's actually this this and this and that was like oh dang how did i miss that again so always reread so by the end of my clinical rotation i was just pretty much rereading literally um rereading all of my documentation before i turned it in and that pretty much decreased my mistakes and you know and really saved him time from having to correct me because no ci wants to be correcting you all the time especially not on the same things my next tip that i want to give you is ask questions if you don't understand um this is not a feel of retail this is not something simple. These are real people with real injuries and real, you know, disorders. And you can't afford to be just winging stuff out when you're dealing with real people. Ask questions if you don't understand. If, you're, if your CI assigns you a patient that you think is too, gonna be too much, to ask him for, you know, ask for help, ask for help. Don't be afraid to ask for help, guys. Um, me, I'm more of a very confident, but I am not afraid to ask for help. If I didn't think that I could handle it and I needed more background information or whatever the case is, or I just needed more help, I would ask because at the end of the day, I rather be the one that's, I rather it be on me than to be on the patient. Like you can do a lot of stuff that can be contraindications or you can do stuff that, you know, is very not good for the patient and we don't want the patient in harm. So always in harm. So always ask questions and don't be afraid to do that. Your clinical instructor is there for a reason. Um, and my eighth tip is know when to progress your patients. Um, so definitely before you go into clinical rotation, um, look up on those injuries and the, prog and the progression of them when to progress them and stuff like that because I struggled with that a lot in my clinical rotation where I was like, okay, this is a rotator cuff tear. Um, they're in their fourth or fifth week. Like which phase are they in? Are they, you know what I'm saying? So 
and you have to be very very careful with um, all kinds of tears and ACL tears not to progress them too early because you have to understand that these injuries are still healing so with that being said if you progress them too early you can mess up their surgery and no surgeon wants that like no surgeon wants to have to redo a surgery because you failed to be professional and know your stuff and also aside from the numbers and when to progress your patient you have to understand that your patient can only do so much. So it doesn't matter if they're in the eighth week or the 12th week, if your patient's not ready for that progression, the reality is you can't progress that patient. So definitely first things first, see what the patient can do. What really, and there's a lot of times where the patient's like, I cannot perform this. And that's okay. Don't push them more because you feel like that num they're not at the number that they should be because at the end of the day, they have to feel that aftermath. And, you know, you never want to overdo it. Overdoing it is not good because then the next day they're just not going to be able to do anything and they're going to be really sore and their muscles are going to be like, what the heck did you just do to me? And that's not good. Okay, my ninth tip is to go over your muscles, measurements, and manual therapy. Those are the three things that I felt like I dealt with the most in my clinical rotation. Go over all those things and the injuries. Um, definitely go over the different types of injuries and stuff like that because you really need that. Um, and exercises. Get a great grasp of different exercises that you can perform with different injuries and really, really, really increase your variety of exercises so that way you're not being the typical PTA. Really, really, really study up on exercises because I, in the beginning, I was like, oh my goodness, like, what do I do with this patient? Like, I've already done this, I've already done this, I've already done this, only have, and I still have 30 minutes left. So the more variety of exercises you know, the more creative you can get with your with your treatment plan and last thing my 10th tip that i want to give you is connect with your ci y'all really 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 gain a bond with your ci with this relationship you can get so many benefits you know and i know it's not always easy sometimes you'll get a ci that's not that's not the best, you know, and that's okay, but just try your best as far as connecting with your clinical instructor um, because this can create a lot, this can open up a lot of doors for you in the future as far as, um, you know, jobs and stuff like that. But that is the sum of this video. Um, I'm sorry it's super long, but I promise you if you watch it, it's super beneficial if you're going into your clinical rotation. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. I love you guys so much and I'm so happy to kind of be back on YouTube. I'm on a break right now so I can breathe and I can finally do the things that I really, really love. So thank you guys and stay tuned. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. You gotta subscribe to the channel. Like, if you're not subscribed, like, why you, like, come on, like, what you doing? But anyway, love you guys and peace.